Hey there everybody thanks for taking the time to watch another video here and I really can't thank all of you enough for your support. Before I get on with what Monsignor Stephen Rossetti said of the demon of abortion, I'd like to comment on something that I came across on YouTube. This is Aaron, whose home is apparently experiencing a certain demonic attack, things moving on their own, footsteps running up and down the stairs, lights flickering and knocking on the doors that usually happen between 3 and 4 a.m. We've heard a lot of exorcists explaining these types of occurrences before, and that's not really why I'm sharing Aaron's story here. Ooh. See? Let's do it again. I'm not gonna run. <clears throat> Shit. Instead, what I wanted to share with you in sharing his story is what Aaron decided to do to solve the problem by adopting solution recommended by people on the internet as he felt helpless how to deal with the demons. So apparently, he took the advice of those who follow his story and start burning a stick of sage and using an egg to cleanse his home of whatever it is that's haunting him. Use what y'all said and put the egg in the middle of the room. <clears throat> the egg in the middle. Hey. Okay. Keeps going out. Okay, it's good. Okay. If anything is here, you are not welcome. Is it going out? Oh, it's good. You're not welcome here. You have to leave. You're not welcome. I really didn't want to light. You're not welcome here. You have to leave. Show no fears. You're not welcome here. You're not welcome in the corners. I think it's moving. You're not welcome here. You have to leave, find your way out. I think that's enough. I think you're just getting the spirit mat. And not sure what to expect. Aaron did exactly that. But well, I think you can expect how it turned out. And some of the people who suggested this so-called solution explain that if there's a bad spirit there, a dark substance will come pouring out of the egg and this can be interpreted as a bad sign. And even after the first attempt didn't bring in any positive result, he tried again with a different type of sage in the hopes that burning this one would cleanse his home for good. He even left the windows open as advised by his viewers. Here we go. So if there's a demon in here, you are not welcome. You have to leave. You're not welcome. Still smoking. It's barely lit. You know, people don't think that you're real. People actually think that you don't exist, but I want to show them. So show yourself. Don't be, don't be scared. Just show yourself, come out. Something's definitely showing itself. But it's okay because I got the sage and this. It's barely lit, but it's okay. It's still lit. I'm okay. I'm scared of around this corner. Oops. See, see, see. Here we go. Well, if you're here, you have to leave. 
Or do something to this egg. Do something to this egg. Move it. Maybe it left out the window or something. Okay, let's go do the egg so I can leave my apartment. <laughs> I wanna get out of here. Okay, here you go. And again, again, I don't know why. So everybody, you can probably guess what I'm going to say now, that if you're experiencing something like Aaron here, don't go for this foolish solution of burning sage and use eggs or whatever. If anyone can even reach out to Aaron, just let him know that what he should do instead is to reach out to a local church and more importantly, if you're a Christian, get in touch with your local parish. That's what people like Father Vincent Lampert always tells us to do and definitely not trying to get rid of these demons with the help of foolish solutions. Well, my sincerest apology that Aaron's story took too long, but I just feel that it is something important to share with all of you in case you or anyone you know are experiencing something similar. You should know better than to not do what Aaron did. Now, before we get on with what Monsignor Stephen Rossetti said of the demon of abortion, I think what Father Carlos Martin said in the following clip will be helpful in understanding why exorcists often ask the demons their names during exorcisms. So why is it important to find out the name of a demon in an exorcism? Well, because when you have something's name, right? And, and so look, Christianity stands on the shoulders of Judaism. In Judaism, the, the name and the individual are one and the same. They are mysteriously bound up. A name is fundamentally important. We hear in the scriptures, I have called you forth by name, mm. right? So that the Lord himself, God himself has given people, entities, a name. So God himself was delighted to have Adam name the animals, right? Names are important. So it, a name to a demon, his name will separate him from the unknown, and from the other demons so that your prayers can be focused and they hit with a precision against this entity right so your your prayers have a much more acute mm. impact upon this entity when they are pronounced against the name when the name of, of the de demonic entity is used demons live in wounds and the wound itself is a soupy reality. It's made up of many parts. Uh, all of those parts are wonderful places in which the demon can hide. Mm -hmm. So to name his name separates him from all of the other parts, right? The demons are legalistic entities, right? They, they will always exercise their legal rights. And unless something is done in proper legal terms, they don't have to abide by it. The job of the exorcist is to find out why the devil is there. Mm -hmm. What rights has he gained? And then it's his job to use that knowledge to rescind the demon's rights, to help the victim to rescind those rights. Once the rights are gone, then the devil has nothing keeping him there. Right? He can be commanded to leave. But until the rights are dissolved, well, he has every right to be there. So if I don't know what demon is there, how can I extract his rights? So I think Father Carlos Martin's answer is quite clear, isn't it? And now back to the original purpose of this video, which is to share what Monsignor Stephen Rossetti shared one particular exorcism where the demon of abortion revealed his name. In his writing he wrote, and I'm paraphrasing what he wrote to retell this story for you guys. Lucy is possessed and being tortured nightly by the demons. They taunt her, mark her body with scratches and burns, claim that they own her, and often twist her bad leg which is excruciating for her. Well, we know now that demons are merciless and relentless. After a number of intense exorcism sessions, the demons were weakening. 
It seemed to Monsignor Stephen Rossetti that they just might be weak enough to be compelled by the power of Jesus to reveal their names. Having their demonic names gives additional power to cast them out and suggests that the time of their exit is approaching, as explained in details by Father Carlos Martins in the previous clip. And so Monsignor Rossetti demanded again and again and again, tell me your name, which is a line direct quote from the traditional rite of exorcism. The demon resisted mightily, but finally, with great reluctance, it gave up its name, Abizu. Upon hearing the name, Monsignor Rossetti looked up the name and several sources concur, which is also spelled as Abizu, Obizu, Obazith, Abazouth, Baizu, and Abizu is the name of a female demon in the Near East blamed for miscarriages and infant mortality. Unfortunately, Lucy had had an abortion, but she sincerely repented, went to confession, and remained very contrite. While any and all sins are forgiven in the sacrament, this does not mean that associated demons are immediately cast out. Often, a time of purgation is necessary, and given the gravity of the sin and the resulting tragic child's death, it was going to be a fight to cast out this demon. Abizu taunted Lucy for having had an abortion, and the demon told her she could never be forgiven. It played on her deep sense of guilt and attempted to drag her into the darkness of hopelessness and despair. According to Monsignor Rossetti, this is typical demonic behavior as demons not only tempt you to commit sin, but then, if you do, they taunt you and shame you for doing so. And so Monsignor Rossetti and his team assured Lucy that her sin was truly forgiven and said a prayer for her baby. In the midst of the session, one of the exorcists was inspired to hold up an icon of Our Lady of Guadalupe and the demon went into a huge convulsion and so they repeatedly invoked Our Lady under this title and the demon convulsed every time the icon was held up. The effectiveness of this holy image is no accident as the icon of Our Lady of Guadalupe reveals Mary as a pregnant woman and she is often invoked under this title for unborn children. Moreover, under her feet is a symbol of the moon and darkness, a reference to the devil. Well, that is all for this video, and I sincerely do hope that you've learned something from this video. Just remember that we are on the side of God, and whatever ways the devil wants us to believe that he's powerful, that is all part of his tricks, and we shouldn't fall for it. My sincerest thanks to all of you for watching and your support of this channel, and God bless you.